Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka welcoming you to another half hour of Rural Heritage on RFD TV. Today we're in Lebanon, Missouri at Wagons for Warriors, where chuck wagons have gathered to support our American veterans. Pretty soon the table you see behind me is going to be filled up with a crowd of people sampling all of the different kinds of foods being prepared on cast iron over open fires at these chuck wagons. This is the largest gathering of its kind. Most of the wagons here are authentic reproductions or restorations of original wagons used on the plains of America. Thanks for joining us on Rural Heritage on RFD TV. Eleven years ago, me and a friend of mine, Mitch Morgan, started going to San Antonio uh, to Fort Sam Houston and we were cooking, we were actually cooking for uh, wounded warriors there and this was when the war was going on and there was a lot of uh, veterans coming back that were seriously injured. So we were cooking for them up there. So we decided we could do this at home uh, here and I'm retired civil service. I'm a Navy Vietnam Air veteran and retired to civil service from Fort Leonard Wood and I thought well, we could do this here but instead of doing it on the installation at Fort Leonard Wood, let's do it here in Lebanon. And uh, instead of feeding the veterans, we'll feed the public and just take the money and help the veterans with that. And that's how this all came together. One thing I'd like to say, folks, we, we've had wagons here from all over the country, as you know that. We had one of our brothers, Mike Bonnet, that came in Thursday. Uh, he was setting his wagon up and had a heart attack, and he didn't make it. Uh, he he spent his last few minutes on this earth doing what he loved to do and we want to remember him and uh, we're gonna we're gonna remember him when we pray anyway thank you veterans we love you thank you for your sacrifice thank you for everybody for coming out and helping and help raise money for our warriors indeed Dave Father God we come to you today thanking you thanking you not only for this beautiful day and for each and every wagon and wagon crew that's here. We thank you for the people that are here, Father, but more than anything, we want to thank you for the veterans that give so much so that we can have the freedom that we share in this country right here. We pray that you not only bless the food, but bless every wagon camp. Bless every patron that's come today and bless our veterans. More than anything, bless the cause that we do here today so that we can continue to help veterans out in the central Missouri area. We can continue to make a difference in this country that we call the great United States. Be with us now. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's eat! Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I use that 1910 catalog for my specification, exact size and striping pattern and everything of the box. You harvested the hardware? Yes, I harvested all the hardware. And uh, of course back then, <coughs> everything was seven eighths lumber, and now it's three quarter. Right. So I had to buy one inch rough sawed lumber and keep it a year until it cured and plane it down to get that eighth of an inch. And we carry all the old tools enough to replace theoretically any piece on this wagon if you were on a trail we have the two-man saw to cut out a big tree we have axes and, and as to uh, flatten them out we have the drawing knife to, to draw it down the wrenches to get the nuts and bolts off uh, we have the uh, chisels and screwdrivers, the uh, uh, brace and bit to put the holes in. So theoretically, if we were caught on a trail drive, we could replace any piece on the wagon in time. And the block and tackle, you can get yourself pulled out. Well, they did their own butchering. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, a lot of people think they pretty well lived off beef, but that was the commodity they were carrying to market. So if an in right. beef was injured, they'd use him. Or if uh, uh, a heifer happened to have a little calf, they would use the veal. But they didn't eat a lot of beef. Uh, my research is they lived pretty well on antelope and wild turkey. But they still had to butcher the antelope. And they were on prairie. There was nothing to hang the carcass up. Right. So you could take this block and tackle and hook to the wagon post and to the tongue. Pick the tongue up. And yep. you just draw this tongue on up, and you've got your carcass hanging here to work on him. Yep. Right. Right. We have the uh, meat saws and the cleavers and everything to do their own on your own butchery and everything. When you you carried a full supply of what the cowboys needed to survive and uh, grease buckets. I was in Scott's Bluff, Nebraska, at that uh, National Monument out there. Okay, right. And they had a couple of the old prairie schooners, and I got to look into the grease buckets were a one-piece bucket to use to grease the hubs. And so I came home and got my chisel and stuff out and made it, made a grease bucket. We carry a... Wagon jack, and there's all kinds of wagon jacks, of course. This particular one came up on eBay, not this particular jack, but that particular design. design came up on eBay, and a doctor friend of mine said, I'm going to get that for your wagon. And after a couple of weeks, he sent me a picture of it. He said, That's all you get. So that thing went too high, and I quit you. You're not worth that. So I took the picture. I knew this was two inch dimension because pretty well all wagon wheels come in. Uh, diameters of four, so the radius would have been two inches. So I took my scale rule and I put it on that picture and I turned it till I found a scale that reached that read two, and then I could measure all the rest of it out and get it in scale and built one. So it'll fit under the axle of a wagon with 48, 44, 40, and 36 inch, and it's a cam lock. It it just pushes down and it locks. Yeah. It'll hold even. You just raise it back up. And it'll, it'll clear these wheels about an inch, so you can slide them out and uh, grease them. Did you get a blacksmith to make the hardware? I, I did. I've got a little blacksmith shop. I made all the hinges and hardware and everything on the wagon. I just I just like to play, and it's always been my challenge. If I don't have something, I gum, I can build it. I guess so. And so. Uh, yeah. You, you you built this saw carrier here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't know how where to put the saw, and this our pole for our fly. Okay. Goes in here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I thought, well, I just riveted that on, and this particular saw came without this handle. And uh, 
our Chuck Wagon Association said we need to have a two-man saw on the wagon. And so this is a two-man saw when you use this handle, or it can be a one-man. It's either sure. or. But I turned the, the little handle down and made it for it. Of course, we uh, carry a pouch underneath. And that came from the pioneers, I think, before the Chuck Wagon era. They were going across the prairie. And so there was no wood source when they started to stop and camp at night. Especially if there were 50 wagons. Right. You know, if there's zero wood source and you got 50 wagons, well, 50 times zero is really zero. So uh, they, the wagons were totally full. You couldn't put anything in the wagon. Right, right, right. And so they hung a buffalo pouch or a, a buffalo hide or something under the wagon. <coughs> As they crossed creeks during the day where there was brush and the dried buffalo chips and whatever, they pick up and toss under there. So each wagon had enough fuel for, that for their for their supper at night. Yeah. Yep. And these fellas. Yep, it's see, it's all nice and bubbly. All it has to be is hot. Nice. You like beef stew? I do. You better come back and get some because it'll I be shall. gone pretty quick. I shall. It's gone in usually about 15 minutes every okay. time we can get it all fixed. And these girls can make the best batch of biscuits and uh, cherry cobbler you'll ever have. Where y'all from? Clinton, Missouri. Yeah. Do you do very many of these gatherings? You know, we, everything we do with this thing is either related to our military or, or church events. And uh, uh, we're going to do four of them this year. Uh, we're going to cook for the honor flights up in Shelbina, Missouri next month. And we'll, uh, we'll be up there. And, and we're going to be in Stillwater, Oklahoma in September. We're going to cook uh, down by uh, Lamar, Missouri in September. We want to do four to six a year, what yep. we do. but everything we do is, is for the military, the military or, or church. church event. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Yeah. It's an international harvester. Oh, is it okay? Yes, sir. It's stamped IH on the nuts and on the back of the hubs and in here on the box. Very nice. Stamped IH. It's a roundup. Some words though. I don't know, 1935, somewhere along in there. I don't know. There's a there's some little small things that a, a Weber or a international guy can tell you that they did this in 193. I don't know. It's early 1900s. Very nice. And it's one of them deals I don't have a, any paperwork on it. And we oh, remade sure. Elmer Richardson at Bryson rebuilt it about 15 years ago. And so the box, he rebuilt the box of running gear except for the brakes. It's 100% original. But, Great shape. But we, one of them deals. You did a great job. <laughs> Is the other one bacon? Yeah. Yes, sir. I just put it in. You move on and find someone Kind of pie. Tomato. Is it? Tomato cobbler. Nice. We've been making them for about 15 years and keep kind of trying to improve on them, whatever, you know. We've never had but two people in the 15 years. Guess what it was when they ate it? You don't do the uh, the the bean pie, do you? Pinto bean pie? Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, Steve was telling me about that last night. Yeah. Yeah, he said that they're pretty amazing. Yeah, we, uh, we hadn't made very many of them pinto bean pies in years until Steve got on that RFD last year and said it. So, so well, hey. <laughs> they, they'll start taking uh, gates open at 10, and we'll serve at uh, noon. We'll start serving at noon. And uh, this, this year, I, I want to mention our Indians from Delaware. We have the Nanakoke Indians here from Delaware, and they're beautiful people. They're very colorful outfits. They'll be dancing, drumming, and singing, great. and the stuff they're doing is in tribute to uh, veterans. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, at, at the kids all love it. Everybody enjoys it. You know. <laughs> My name is 
Matthew Harmon. It's uh, Nanticoke, Nanticoke Nation of uh, Millsboro, Delaware, Indian River 100 in Delaware. Is that the name it's always had? The Nanticoke Indians of, uh, of Delaware, yes. We didn't change it on you guys? <laughs> well, the original word is Quinectico, uh, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it means the tidewater people or the people that live near the, the coastal, the tide, or any tide waters, tidal waters. Uh, so we're, we're an eastern woodland um, tribe of uh, indigenous people. We lived on obviously the, the eastern uh, sea coast, particularly in the Delmarva uh, Peninsula region. Um, there was a lot of hunting, a lot of uh, fishing. That's how we, we, we uh, hunted and fished. And also uh, farming. Um, a lot of the uh, things that we have today, the, cult, the community and the, and, the, and the area and the uh, family owned, now family owned land passed down uh, was, uh, was land that was bought back by families through sharecropping and tenant farming and whatnot uh, and have been handed down to uh, the, the different family names that, that we have there. So it's farming's been a big, agriculture's been a big, big part of our, our community, even in the old days to uh, up to this day. So The people that I descended from, the people that, are, that we descended from there in, in Millsboro were the ones that kind of were the hard hits. We, we hung out, we hid in swamps, hidden uh, what's called the Great Pokemook Swamp, Cypress Swamp, and um, were quiet and were able to uh, embrace the, the surrounding culture as far as dress and things. And so we were kind of hidden off in the, in the, in the, in the uh, remote. Radar. Yes. We, we had become, uh, it, it wasn't a matter of just assimilating for the purpose of just survival. That was a key, a key part of it, but also we had been introduced to the gospel. We had been introduced to Christian teaching and doctrine. We had been introduced, and, and, a, and our church today is one of the largest, or the, the main stay of, of, of our community. So in conversion to, to Jesus Christ, a lot of the community had, had been able to stay together for, because of that. It wasn't by holding on and trying to grasp on. We saw that that stuff had been taken and carried with, with the people who moved west. But the people who stayed there on Delmarva were able to maintain and live and survive as a people. Not, you know, Native American, we're white people, it's, we're Americans. And we're Americans first. We're not just the first Americans, we're Americans first. And so in that, we share that, that, that open relationship and it's been awesome. These people have been warm and welcoming and we've met a lot of new friends and we've, we've enjoyed it. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And that donation will give them a wristband and they can eat, they can sample food off of every wagon here. Uh, you, you don't go to one wagon and get a, a, a whole meal. Uh, you could, but we don't do that because we want people to eat off of every wagon Grace. here and sample food off of every wagon here. Thank you, huh? Thank you. Thank you, sir. This is our second year here, and I think we'll be a regular. You do quite a job, don't you? Oh, right, It's a lot of fun. 
and for a good cause. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.